Welcome back to HorseRacingNation.com's look at 2013 Kentucky Derby contenders. I'm Jared Horak, once again, joined by Ryan Patterson. This is the best time of the year, Jared. This is even better than Christmas. This is Christmas for horse racing fans. <laughs> it definitely is. And, and it wouldn't be the Kentucky Derby without Wayne Lucas. And we're going to talk about his horse, or one of his horses here, right. a Will Taylor. He's got not only one, but two horses in the Kentucky Derby this year. And it looks, you know, unlike recent years, he's not just running a horse to do it. And he wants another one. He actually is going to run Title Town 5 uh, in the Derby trial. And if he gets, if he runs, if he wins That it, one he would be running <laughs> just to do it. He would, he would be. Uh, but he would wheel him back in a week. And, and the more horses he can get in, the better. My gosh, uh, is it three or four Kentucky Derby wins for Lucas? Uh, he, he's got quite, he's got a few. He, he won it with, um, with Thunder Gulch. He won it with the Philly. Right? Was it winning, colors. winning colors? Yeah. There was at least one or two more. But yeah, he's going to bring Will Take Charge to the races off of a win in the Rebel Stakes. And we haven't seen him since. Where's he been? Uh, this is odd for Lucas because he loves to run horses, he, a lot of races. He gives them a, big, a good foundation. Uh, but, but he's bringing this one in off of a layoff. Right. Uh, and take a look at the sire there. Unbridled song. You think he might be a little brittle? <laughs> that definitely could be the case, and it, it, it's just odd how they're bringing this horse into the race. I, I haven't been particularly impressed with the Arkansas horses all year. This horse has followed that path uh, right along, and, and, uh, and John Court's going to ride. Right, and not only the layoff worries me for Will Take Charge, but I just don't see him going the distance. Unbridled um, Song, to me, isn't the, the greatest stamina influence, and if you look at the fact, you know, for as great as Take Charge Lady was, grade one winner, multiple grade one winner, she's by the hair or Dahiri, excuse me, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name correctly, but he is known for producing precocious two-year-olds that are good around a single turn, not route racehorses, not horses that want to go a mile and a quarter. Yeah, that could be a big factor for this horse. I, I feel the same way. I don't know about the pedigree. I don't know that he's really fast enough. Uh, he, he, he's won a couple races at Oak Lawn, uh, but, but I think he could end up being a second-tier contender. Uh, I don't like the layoff either. Right. Uh, let's just jump to the so next we'll toss one. Tossin will take charge. Yeah. We'll toss him out. Contender or pretender, we both say pretender. Right. Uh, it's my lucky day is the next one in line. I think this horse is sneaky. You know, he's going to be double-digit odds. He's run bigger brisnet speed figures than any other horse in the race. And he's just a plain fast racehorse. And he's one I'm not sure what to make of. I, I agree with you. He, he, he ran very fast uh, earlier this year at Gulfstream Park of that, that Holy Bull Stakes that he earned a big number. The start before that, he earned a, a big number. Then they rested him. Uh, and I don't, I don't blame him for resting this horse because I think he's already had 10 lifetime starts. There was no reason right. but to just keep running him into the ground. So, so they gave him nine weeks off. They ran him in the Florida Derby. Uh, he ended up a, a solid second. Right, yeah. And he was uh, fresh and coming into that race, as you said. And that ought to have uh, tightened the bolts up pretty good. And if you worked strongly at Churchill Downs, you can't leave this horse off of your pick four. Definitely. Eddie Plisa, the trainer, he likes to work those horses one mile at Calder. And he had that one mile work prior to his last. And he'd given him, he gave him another one mile work earlier this week. And people were impressed with that. And so I, I think he's going to be fit and ready. It's just a question of, of is he going to be good enough away from Florida? I think that's my main concern with him, right. is that he, all his big efforts were at Gulfstream, Calder, and we'll have to see if he can he run the same race at Churchill. Right, yeah. Uh, minus, you know, concerns about the distance and can he race strongly away from Gulfstream Park and Calder race course, it's my lucky day is as good as any horse in this race. Uh, he, he definitely is. He, he's got the right style, too. He's got that tactical speed. He's going to be able to, to work out a decent forwardly placed trip. We've mentioned some of the horses in our other videos, like Verrazano, um, Revolutionary's got a little bit of versatility, but Overanalyze is, is a tactical type. Uh, that, that could come into play here, because you have a lot of horses that have that tactical ability, and they're going to be able to stay out of traffic. Right, yeah, it's my lucky day. He'll be right there, and when it's time to kick it into overdrive, I mean, he broke Shanghai Bobby's heart. So he can go buy good racehorses. He definitely can, and, and it just can't be said enough that you don't want a deep closer in this race. You want a horse that can stay out of trouble. Now, last year I liked Union Rags, and he just got into all kinds of trouble. Right, yeah. And, and, and Seems post to be position, the of the favorite lately. And post position means something, too, because Union Rags broke towards the inside. I think he was in post three or four. You probably want to be like out more towards the middle. And even outside is not as bad as being close to the inside, because you can just get shuffled back and lose all chance. Right, and it's my lucky day. You know, you never know how things are going to happen. You know, this horse breaks bad, or this horse is hung all the way outside. He might be on the lead. <laughs> That's true. The next horse we're going to talk about here, uh, Governor Charlie for trainer Bob Baffert. Could be Baffert's only derby contender. Uh, and he has that positional speed as well. Right, and he's by Midnight Loot, who was a two-time Breeders' Cup Sprint winner for Bob Baffert, out of the Stormcat Mare Silver Bullet Way, who was by another, who was out of a um, another Baffert trainee, Silver Bullet Day, 
coincidentally, Mike Pegram, I believe, owned all three of the horses, Governor Charlie and both Silver Bullet Way and Midnight Loot. He's lightly raced. I think that's going to be his, uh, it's going to put the nail in his coffin. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's the main thing here. He's only run, what, three, three races in his life? Right. And, and then he went to Sunland and won last time. And I just don't think he has the experience. And then he had some kind of foot problem. And they took him in for an examination. He's okay, though, and it looks like he's going to run. But just the combination of, of, of that, and, and he's just so lightly raced. And, and, and I think later this year, he's, he's one you want to look at. I Correct. Think. Yeah, this but, could be your Travers type of horse. And, but if he's going to win the Kentucky Derby, it's going to be one of two things. A, he's a monster and none of us knew. Or B, everyone else is really bad. <laughs> That's true. And I think if, of lightly raced horses, you have to think... Verrazano would, would be one that, right. that, that's much better than him, and he has a much better chance Correct. than Governor Charlie. Our, our final horse here we're going to talk about, uh, Black Onyx. Black Onyx, yeah, and he's trained by Kelly Breen. He won the Spiral Stakes up at Terrafoy Park, and the horses coming off the poly track have had a, a lot of success in the Kentucky Derby. Just last year we had Went the Day Well finished fourth, Dillahan finished third, both off the poly track, Animal Kingdom won off of the poly track, Hard Spun second off of the poly track. But uh, that said, this horse looks like he's going to have to really step it up. The interesting thing about him is he can handle anything. He actually broke his maiden on the main track at Aqueduct. Uh, then he won a turf race at Gulfstream Park at going to Rowdy Ground. And then he won the spiral stakes on Synthetic. Uh, so Kelly Green can have a lot of fun with this one this year. Right, yeah. He can run him in, in basically in anything that he wants to. And he knows how to win a triple crown race. He did win the Belmont Stakes with Ruler on Ice. Right, and uh, Ruler on Ice was a big, big long shot, wasn't he? He was about 20 to 1. Yeah, so, was, I mean, Breen can get the long shots home in the Triple Crown races, but that said, the Kentucky Derby is an entirely different ball game than the Belmont Stakes. Reportedly, he's training well. He was the first horse to arrive on the grounds of Churchill Downs. He's out of Rock Hard 10. I was a Rock Hard 10 fan. I think um, Jason Orman was the original trainer, and then Richard Mandela took over the training of Rock Hard 10 later in his career, and he really took off and flourished, and he won the big cap in some other races. And, uh, and, and so I think he, he, the stamina influence is there. He's got positional speed. I think that plays well. He can handle anything. So, and sometimes the horses don't handle Churchill. So the fact that this horse can handle any footing kind of makes you think he's going to handle Churchill as well. It's just a question of is he good enough. Right, and the horses that, that are by Rock Hard 10 tend to be, you know, big, strong horses. And that's kind of what you want at Churchill Downs. Oh, th that is, and, and of the four horses that we talked about, uh, who do you like the best out of Will Take Charge? It's my lucky day, Governor Charlie. Black it's Alex. my lucky day, no question at all. He's going to be a double-digit prize, and like I said, he might be as good as the favorite. I'm going to go with a little bit of a surprise here. I'm going to say Black Onyx of that group. Uh, I, I think he's a little bit dangerous. Uh, his speed ratings are definitely on the way up. His last two ratings were the best of his career. He's getting better. He's still relatively light ra lightly raced. He's only run five times. Uh, I don't know that dirt's his best surface, but... But he can handle anything, he's training well, he's got that positional speed, he's a little bit interesting. And, and I have to just mention one thing, we forgot, I forgot to mention, Grindstone for Lucas. Right, I hit the yeah. Super Effect in the Derby that year, one of my only scores from the Derby ever, and that'll make me ahead for the Derby forever, I guess. Was he uh, part of the mutual field? Uh, he was coupled with, with Editor's Note that year, right. and, and that kind of hurt his price, but, but all the photos went my way, and I got lucky and got that one, and, and bought my first computer, and that's how I got, ended up online, so everything wow. kind of... Went into, and how could I have forgotten Grindstone when we were mentioning the horses, wow. but, but I ended yeah. up forgetting that. So our next video, we're going to start with Palace Malice.